The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to our webinar, SPC Intrusion System Introduction. My name is Jeff Rushton and I'll be your presenter for today. So Alarm Corp webinars are back and it's uh, great that you can join us. For those that haven't joined us before, I'll just run through a couple of main points to uh, remember. Firstly, you'll see that you're, you're currently muted. Please remain muted during the course of the, the webinar. If you have any questions, please type them here and uh, click the send button. I will attempt to answer the questions um, you know, if time permits, uh, or I will email you the answer after the webinar. If there's any handouts available during the, the webinar, you can download them from here. Before we get started, well, before we get started with the panel, you may be wondering who Vanderbilt is. Vanderbilt's head office is in Germany. It's a wholly owned division of Vanderbilt Industries in the United States. And Vanderbilt purchased the Siemens Security Business Division back in 2015. In 2005, Siemens acquired SPC from iMetrics. And the final puzzle, piece of the puzzle in iMetrics is owned by Europlex, who developed the SPC product range. And all R&D for Vanderbilt products occurs in Ireland. Vanderbilt is now the largest independent business of its kind in the security industry. Vanderbilt is owned by Access Control Related Enterprises, founded by Joe Grillo. Joe was named the most influential person in the fire and security industry back in 2016. Up until July this year, ACRE owned Mercury Security. Mercury developed products for many of the industry's largest players, some of which might be familiar to you. In 2016, ACRE acquired Comnet and ACT, or Access Control Technologies. So, so now for SPC, what is it? Well, it's a scalable, multi-language system with an embedded web server. It has many access control features and advanced security functions for banks and financial institutions and inbuilt audio and video verification. The product also has an extensive software suite and talks to a secure cloud portal called SPC Connect. SPC Connect is the topic for next week's webinar. SPC has also a number of third party integrations to home automation, access control and CCTV systems as well. If we look at the numbers, we can see the difference between the three models available. The, four, the SPC 4000 series has four areas, up to 32 zones and 30 outputs. The 5000 series can go up to 16 areas, 128 zones and also 128 outputs while the 6000 series has 60 areas, capacity up to 512 zones, and also 512 outputs. The system has a range from between four 
to up to 64 doors on the system. All have embedded web server and Ethernet, and the larger panels have uh, 10,000 event log memory and 10,000 access events. The overview here highlights all of the various modules and software that we will discuss in the upcoming slides. If you haven't already done so, you can download the brochures and the video from your GoToWebinar control panel in the handout section. The system comes with three different metalwork sizes and they're available for most models. We can see that the G2 fits the panel, a seven amp hour battery, and up to one expander. The G3 cabinet has a hinge door and a drop down PCB plate. So we can uh, add four expanders and a larger 17 amp hour battery can also be fitted. Then the G5 can hold up to six expanders and two large 24 amp hour batteries. Three types of keypad are also available. We can see that the 4 series has a 2x16 character display and it can come with or without a prox reader fitted. The 5 and 6 series have a 128 by 64 pixel graphical display and they can come with a prox and MyFair reader and a microphone and a speaker all as options. The mic and speaker allow for two-way communication with either your app or control room running the, the COM XT SPC software. Both the 5 and the 6 series keypads can be flush mounted and you can also display a custom logo of your choice. As for the expanders, we have eight input and eight put out and eight output boards, as well as a two door intelligent controllers. There's optional plug in boards for PSTN if you wanted to go that way, or for 3G. They can also be added as options. Also, additional power supplies that are fully monitored and can add up to an additional two amps of current to help power the various modules that you've added. A nice feature though of, of these options is the optional indicator expander. It has 16 programmable tri-color LEDs, a card reader, and it has four programmable buttons. This addition makes a great mimic panel for any system requiring quick visual identification of any of the system states. A multi-language system may not appear to be such an important option here in Australia, but for an international company with offices around the world, means the keypad can now display the home language of the user. So it's a great benefit. Another side benefit of this is that any menu text on the keypad can be customized either for a particular customer or a particular application. The panel has many, many features and some of them I will um, mention here today. Firmware updates can be done direct from the web browser. Also, automatic addressing and discovery of all the modules on the system can be done. We can have a programmable end-of-line resistance value per zone 
and that includes having triple end of line resistance values for things like anti-mask detectors. There's a buzzer in each module so we can easily identify the module that we're, we're dealing with on site. There's also a startup wizard to set up the hardware and the type of system you're installing. And it comes with Australian standards AS2201 as a selectable option within the panel. There's a variety of calendar options we can set up. There are cause and effect triggers or macros. There's audio and video verification on the system. We can have multiple event reporting profiles. There's also multiple status pages to see the entire state of the system, including voltage and current of important system components. There's also recording of the zone resistance every time that zone is opened or closed and the ability to track the resistance changes to detect potentially future faults. When it comes to access control functions, many options for controlling the system on card badging are available. Things like badge to disarm, double badge to arm, anti-passback, escort and custodial control are all standard features. Any attached readers are automatically enrolled with the correct card format automatically being selected. So installation ultimately is a breeze. For audio and video verification, the microphone from selected keypads or audio expanders can be attached to a zone. So on alarm, the audio is recorded and sent to a control room. The same applies for up to four IP cameras. The RTSP stream from these cameras is transmitted on alarm with easy to view pre and post images for verification. If you've enabled live look-in, then you can view those cameras from the app or from a control room using the COM XT SPC software. One of the main or, or, or better advantages on the panel is the bus configuration for all of the modules. Up to 50 kilometres of total bus, bus length is possible as each module regenerates the signal. So multiple configurations are possible, including spur, token, loop, pretty much ensuring that any wiring configuration can be supported. Programming of the system can be done in a whole host of, of ways. Firstly, through the keypad. Just about all programming can be done direct at the keypad, or it can be done through any web browser on the same network as the panel, with no need to install any software at all. It can also be programmed via the SPC Pro download software, or alternatively, from any web browser anywhere in the world using the SPC Connect cloud portal. The web server is a, a logical, easy to navigate structure, and it's presented in a, in a graphical view. So I'll just quickly show you system here. So all we need to do is direct our web browser to the IP address of the system, log on with our user details, and then we're presented with, I suppose, a, a home page that shows the current state 
of your alarm system. In this case, it's saying that it's unset or it's disarmed. We can arm it directly with the full set icon over here in the corner. It's also telling us that we don't have any system alerts. There is nothing preventing us from setting the system and that there is nothing isolated or inhibited within the system as well. If the system was in alarm, the alarm tab here would tell us exactly what's caused it. And in this particular case, we have three cameras connected to the system. So these three cameras are updating about once a second um, and shows us up to four cameras on the system here. There is a status page or a number of status pages from the, the side menu. From here we can see the state of the, the tampers, state of the power, and so it's showing us our battery voltage is currently 13.2 volts and it's sinking about 50 milliamps, so it's telling me that the battery is pretty much fully charged. Out of the auxiliary terminals, we're getting 13.5 volts and it's sinking or, or drawing about 650 milliamps. Based on the six modules that I've got connected, that sounds pretty right, that sounds accurate. All of our uh, electronic fuses are okay. As I've said, we have six modules and there is nothing in tamper or trouble on any of those modules. We can see the state of our ethernet and if we have external modules installed, so I do have a PSDN module here, it's telling me that its current status is okay. From the inputs tab, we can see the state of every input on our system. So the name, the area, the type, the current end of line value. So I've got different values for different zones. Zone one has got a 2.2K end of line. It's telling me that that is good and that it's currently closed and normal. By looking at the log file here, I can see every time that that zone was opened or closed. So I can see the resistance value, so 2.2 and infinite, going back as far as the log allows me to. I can see the state of my outputs. Now the panel has six outputs on board without any expansion. I've allowed one of those outputs to be controlled by a user. So in this case, we can turn this output on or off. And in this case, we'll turn my LED sign on or off and highlight that, that icon. If we have doors connected, I can see the state of my doors, that they're both closed, that their, their status is normal. Again, from here, I can look at the log file and look at every single time that that door was opened or closed or accessed with a card. From here, I can lock down that door so no cards will work. I can unlock that door so the door is obviously unlocked, or I can momentarily, momentarily allow access um, to allow somebody through that door. FlexC is a protocol that's used to talk to the uh, cloud portal. From here I can see that my connection to the cloud is good and the last time it polled was 52 seconds ago. So I can see from that that everything is, is good. There's various log files I can look at for that connection also. Or I can go over to this last tab for system alerts and basically all the software alarms on this system it can tell me the state and allow me to isolate or inhibit those. I could choose to look at the log file from here, the system log, the alarm log, or any time a cause and effect macro has taken place, it will highlight here also. The access log is listed separately as well as my communication or my modem logs. So it's, it's giving me the, the last few entries of my um, PSTN modem here. 
By getting into installer mode by clicking the icon at the top here, I can now program the system. So just very quickly, under configuration, I can now see all of my zones. I can select one of a multitude of end line resistance values, give it a description, select from a list of zone types, enable it to an area, this system only has one area, and then dependent on the zone type that I've selected here, a bunch of different attributes will appear on this page. So we can see that they're all checkboxes or drop down menus with the name and a description of what that particular function does. So we can sort of see from here if it isn't a checkbox, it's a drop down box, or we just enter freeform text. And all of the options have help text or a manual, for want of a better word, next to anything. So we really don't need to refer to the manual and we can understand what these options do by reading, by reading the text here. There are a load of options on this system, but they're all accessed and programmed in exactly the same way. By drop down boxes, entering a value or selecting an option. So as seen, everything can be programmed simply with the web browser and that no other software is required for the system. In saying that though, we have some software packs. So we have SPC Connect Pro. This now combines your local panel programming and discovery with the panels configured in the SPC Connect service. So now what this does is provide a seamless list of all your available pro uh, panels, either local or in the cloud. So whether they're local or located anywhere, we can program them with this Connect Pro software. The SPC Connect portal, that's the focus of our next webinar, but basically it allows for the ability to offer a variety of services not limited to things like controlling your system with your Apple or Android app, automated backups, reporting, automated firmware updates, and audio and video alarm storage. SPC ComXT, this is the software that's located in the control room to control the various functions unique to the SPC panel. Oops, gone too far. SPC Manager makes user control a breeze. It allows you to manage multiple users and have their details automatically upload to all of the panels that they have access to without the requirement of programming each panel separately. So next week, We'll highlight the functions of the SPC Connect portal. But basically, as I've just mentioned, this cloud service provides a number of value added services to help your business and customer. So it's the link to the mobile apps. It provides automated system backups each night and monthly reports on the system status. It can store up to 12 months worth of audio and video alarm history. It can automatically upgrade your system firmware at set times. You can send push notifications to any of your customer groups for things like specials, general notices, or maybe account information. So I'm going to suggest that if you join us for next week's webinar, we can learn a little bit more about the, uh, the cloud portal. So the app, 
It's available for iOS, Android, and Windows 10. The SPC app allows for full control of your system, including arm and disarm of any area, isolate or de-isolate any zone, to view the event or the access log, to operate any output, or to open or momentary open or lock an access door. You can also use it to view any camera. And it also has the ability to have a two-way communication or a conversation with anyone at the keypad while also viewing that associated camera with it. The app can send push notifications for things like alarms, troubles, open close, and, and uh, more as well. More options are available. Maps can be loaded and you can have icons for any or all of your functions overlaid on the map for easy operation, as we can see here. And as I've stated, we can have push notifications can be sent for system events directly to the user. One of the, the more flexible functions of the, of the system is the ability to send the right information to the right location. So here we can have up to 10 different transmission paths, if required, and decide what events under what conditions are sent out. They can be primary or backup paths. So FlexC is Vanderbilt's proprietary format that's used for this means. So for Ethernet monitoring, the frequency can be adjusted to suit the security risk. So it can range from an eight second pole to over a 24 hour pole if needed. SPC also integrates with a number of third party complementary systems. The important ones for Alarm Corp are the integration into our other product ranges. So for access control, SPC integrates into our ACT, our access control technologies system, or the Siemens SciPass product. And for CCTV, into our CTEC product, or Vanderbilt's Avensis range of NVRs. SPC integrates Sorry, went too far. It also integrates into a, a number of PSIM applications, like the ones that we can see here. Beyond that, also a selection of automation and home automation systems. There's also a range of monitoring platforms. And for anything that isn't here, an SDK is available so we can further enhance support to other systems as and if needed. The best place to explore further information about SPC is on our YouTube site. This site has dozens and dozens of videos on most of the common and some of the not so common programming functions of the system, as well as it has sales videos. Alternatively to that is Vanderbilt's SPC support page, and here you'll find the latest info. So we'll just have a, a quick look at those two pages. So under YouTube, search for Alarm Corp. Alarm Corp will come up, select us, 
and there's loads of, of videos on our site. What we're looking for in particular for SPC is we need to scroll down to Vanderbilt product videos, SPC intrusion panel tutorials. We can see here that there's 76 videos that we can have a bit of a look at. Most of them are quite short, anywhere between five to, to 10 minutes and go from everything from pulling the system out of the box to programming users, to adding an account um, on the panel, to registering a company account. As I said, it goes on and on and on. Great, great resource to, you know, see anything further about this product range. Failing that, if you head over to SPC support info.com. This is Vanderbilt's page for everything SPC. From this page, we can download the latest firmware, download the Connect Pro software, download any of the manuals, any support information that's available. There's also a calculator wizard to calculate the power requirements for the system. There's also an online learning platform, and I'd actually highly recommend that you log into this and you can start up a free account and then you can go through and there's a dozen or so modules regarding SPC and other products that allows you to learn at your own time and at the end of it, you get a certificate um, for your efforts. So again, any information for SPC can be located at the spcsupportinfo.com website. Would you like to know more about our products? Another great resource is to go to alarmcorp.com.au. From there, you can subscribe to our Alarm Corp Pulse newsletter. Also, by registering on our website, you can gain access to our e-commerce platform in which you can see pricing, you can place orders, and you are enabled then to be able to download technical information on any of our products as well. Or alternatively, you can contact myself or Richard Bell for anything um, in New South Wales, ACT or Queensland, or Chris Island for anything in Victoria, South Australia or WA. Alarm Corp is also very active on various social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, as you've seen, Flipboard or Instagram. If you went to any of those sites, search for Alarm Corp, you can either like or follow us under any of those um, platforms. If you're hungry for more, this is the list of the remainder of the webinars for the rest of this year. So we're holding them on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. and the next one being next Wednesday for the SPC Connect portal. Coming up after that, is the introduction to our latest VMS platform called CTEC. So Kauga is a very versatile platform that also interfaces with the SPC panel. So we can have areas, inputs, outputs on a map, and we can control cameras directly from various SPC functions. So we would be happy that you join us for, for any of these upcoming. So this is the end uh, of this webinar. I certainly appreciate your time today and I understand how precious it is. So I hope you found it beneficial and we look forward to presenting further webinars for you in the future. So for now, it's goodbye and enjoy the remainder of your day. Goodbye.